good to see you again. God bless you and uh, your lovely wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. By the way, my name is Femi. So, Femi is meeting Femi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will not be a good service. Praise God. Hallelujah. I see your theme. Is that your theme for the year? Greater works. Greater works. You, you will see greater things. Amen. You see, because the thing for our church too is um, open heavens. And uh, one of the things Jesus Christ told Nathaniel, he said, you will see greater things. You know, and um, he said, you will see the heavens open and you will see greater things. And by the special grace of God, you will see greater things. Amen. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I I just want to share just a few words with you. Um, I just pray that the Lord will use it to bless your hearts in Jesus' mighty name and move you forward. You see, because uh, greater works, it's, it's important that you, there's an important ingredient that will help you in the issue of greater works. Amen? Amen. But before we start, can we just rise on our feet, please? I'd like us to just bless God. Let us appreciate it. I understand I have, um, I don't know when it starts. He said I have 40 minutes. I don't know if that is still okay. That's not okay. Okay. Oh, praise God. So when it comes to zero, I just hand over. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry, you won't. Uh, <laughs> we will get to that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's just bless the name of the Lord. Let's just begin to appreciate it. Thank you for today. Thank you for your life. Bless him, magnify him, glorify him. Thank you because your life is not a wasted life. Your life is not a wasted life. There's a plan that God has for you. Just give him praise. Just appreciate him. And just appreciate him because it doesn't matter where you are today. God can take you higher. It doesn't matter what you have been through. But the God that we serve, the Almighty, the ancient of it. The God who rules in the affairs of men, He can do greater works. I don't care if you have had a disappointment. I don't care whether you are frustrated. But believe me sincerely, the God that we have come to be tonight is a great God. He is the God who lifts up beggars from the long hill and set them among princes, even the princes of this world. He is the God who has called them. He is the God who has established plan for you in Jesus name. He told us, he said, listen, he said, the thoughts that I have for you, they are good thoughts. Not evil to bring you to an expected end. Please give him one, just bless him one more time. Just say, Father, I thank you, I bless you. I magnify your holy name, my name. Father, I you Let's say, be your holy name. Now begin to pray over the meeting tonight. I want you to pray that the Lord will meet you at the point of your name. I want you to pray that you will not be what you have come. Go on, begin to bless him and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I decree and I declare that the heavens will open over me tonight in the name of Jesus. But as I am here, oh God, I will not go there and close heaven in the name of Jesus. Go on, pray and say, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, what you have for me tonight, oh, that will set me ablaze, even for you in Jesus' name. Not the word of a man, but the word of God. Lord, I magnify and I exalt you. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. Do you want to pray and ask that the Lord will take you to a rock that is higher than you? Ask that the Lord will revive you. Tell the Lord, Lord, I need to hear your voice. Oh, my son, I tell about my mama. They will say to the Lord, that tonight, the Lord will take you to revive you. He will lift you up. Set you upon a rock that is higher than you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Do you want to pray that the Lord, that the word of God will come on their vision? That the Lord, the word of God will do you good. The word of God will prosper me. Go on, say, say, Lord, let the word of God prosper me. Let the word of God do me good. My sake is a devotion. Reggae day, the other heaven. My people will say, the devotion. Reggae day, my son, the Lord, will send the heavens over. We ask that you will open the heavens over us. Even to rise in Jesus' name. That God will meet each and every one of us at the point of our Don't show yourself stronger than him. Lord God, greater works. Empower us for greater works. My reggae tell you, my say, both at Alaba. Ring and tell the host, empower us for greater works. That it will not be a slogan. Do you want to pray? 
What do you see? And Jeremiah answered. He said, I see a branch of an album tree. And the Lord said to him, you have seen well. My prayer is that you will see well. Amen. For I am ready to perform my word. Uh, another version said, he said, I will hasten my word to perform it. So when we begin to talk about greater works, can I ask you a genuine question? Can you see it? You see, because there is absolutely nothing God can do in the life of a man except you see it. You must see what God wants to do. If you can't see it, then actually it will be very, very difficult for you to lay hold on it. Because what God normally does is that he will reveal it to you first. He will show you. By now, I mean, we have already, we, thank God, we've been able to leave uh, January. We're now in February. You see, you need to have written down a few things. What are the greater works you want to see? What are the greater things that you want to see? You need to begin to speak to God. You see, it's very dangerous when the heart of a man is born. I remember when I came to London many, many years ago, many years ago, and I came first. My wife and my daughter, they were in Nigeria. How many people are from Nigeria? Okay. How many people want to go to Nigeria? <laughs> now, and that was just before the times when we had, uh, just before we broke into, uh, what was this, uh, IT. There was no IT then. I mean, what we had then were early morning work where you can clean offices, where you did all the menial work. Those were the kind of stuff we did. And I remember specifically, you see, because that was what was in my heart. I said, Lord, what I would really like is that I want to, I want to work. I was working as a kitchen potter. I said, I want to work in this place. And then I want to have another work. So that such that I will I will leave one work and go to another work. And leave that one and go to another one. So that when I leave home on Monday, they won't see me until maybe Friday. And because that was what was in my heart. So I will do watch night that night. Leave the place and come. Do you know that that's exactly what God gave me? I tell you. In fact, I went a step further. I said, Lord, wouldn't it be lovely that I will walk upstairs in a different office and come down and walk in the morning? Do you know, brethren, that was what the Lord gave me. One day, I was in prayer. You see, because unless you see, you cannot go further than what you see. One day, and the Lord was helping me because he gave me something. He said, how do you think it would look if you were earning 1,000 pounds a week? Ah! I said, that is a lot. That's a lot. I know you IT guys will pay that. I don't need to do that. <laughs> but do you know, by the grace of God, God took us through that stage where by the grace of God, we are any more than that. But you see the thing, you see what the interesting thing about the whole mission, that I was born in the UK. Okay? So when we went to Nigeria, I just came back and said, let me not just come and do a little bit. And when my wife came, she said, what is it? I said, kitchen butter. She said, what is it? She said, watch night. I said, not for me. Ah, what do you mean you met us here? What do you know? He said, no. He said, I want an office job. Do you know that's exactly what God gave Why? Because she could see it. There are some certain things that she doesn't, she can't deal with me, wash, floor. No. Can you see? Can you see? I know you're in college. I know you're in uni. I know you're doing something. But can you see your way forward? God asked the man of God. He said, what do you see? He said, I see the branch of an almond tree. He said, you have seen well. Then he now said, I will hasten my word to perform what you see. What you see. 
What do you see? Let's, 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 forget, let's forget the church. Let's forget the work for the example. What do you see about your own personal self? What do you see? Do you see yourself rising and falling? Do you see yourself as a prayer warrior? Do you see yourself as the word of God having impact in your life? Do you see the word of God working for you? Do you see yourself getting better and better? Do you see yourself getting married? Do you see yourself excelling? Do you see yourself struggling? You see, the Lord will ask you, you say, what do you see concerning yourself? What do you see? It is what you see that God will use. Praise the Lord. And by the time you begin to go into the word of God, and you begin to look at, if you take, for example, if you go and look at uh, Amos 7, 8, I'm just going to call these scriptures out because I don't want us to read them. Amos 7, 8, Amos 8, 2, Zechariah 4, 2, Zechariah 5, 2, all of them, God will ask, what do you see? It is difficult to take a man to a place where you have not been. And that is one of the reasons why it is hypocrisy for a leader to tell somebody, he said, let us go to, let's go and do three weeks fasting. Let's go and do overnight prayer. And you have not gone there. It is hypocrisy. You can't get there. You must be, and that is why one of the, one of the reasons why every opportunity you have, you must be able to allow God to open your eyes so that you can see. No man, no man moves forward without seeing. Do you know, you know about this man called Joseph? If I last time I was looking, I said, wow, this guy, very early in his life, God gave him a dream. He held on to the dream. Do you remember that dream? Where he said that his father and his mother were going to bow before him, and he held on to it. Foolish boy. He was very arrogant. And many, many at times when we have giftings, giftings, you see, and they're from God, but you're not humble about it. You turn everybody against you. That's exactly what happened. They sold him into slavery. And guess what? Let's just quickly look at one or two things about this guy. Let's go to Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39, you know, and uh, the Bible says that he was so into sleep. But you see, they, they, Joseph had a gift. And the gift he had, all right, was that, now let's look at verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had taken him down there. But the, and the Bible says, verse 2, the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. I was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. How can you be a slave and be a successful man? It's because of what he saw. He knew inside himself that I am more than this. Please, never let where you are, what you see, your environmental limitations, it should not determine who you are. No. Oh, you don't have money now. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, you don't understand the word of God. It doesn't mean anything. Never, ever, ever let your environmental surroundings determine who you are. You are more than this. Please tell the person beside you. Say, my sister, my brother. Ah. Oh, is this not a religion? My sister, my brother. Now we are told. You are more than this. Oh, give me sincerely. You are more than what I am seeing. Do you know, remember Smith Wigglesworth? He was a small man, not very tall. He said, but inside. And what? Bigger. Bigger than what I am. Bigger, more bigger, fatter than what I am. And by the time he began to go through the life of this man, he never let his circumstances 
determine who he was. Why? Because he's, he was seeing something. He was seeing something. Let's quick, let's move for one. And before long, he became a big man in the house of Potiphar. And then, as he moved on, I'd like you to jump to verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said, His master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all he has to my hand. Oh my God. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor was he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. Now look at it. You see, this is what Joseph saw. Look at what he saw. He said, How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Now, he didn't say, How can I do this brief enjoyment? How did I, how can I do this uh, little whatever? He saw it as what? A great wicked. What do you see? It is what you see that makes that determines whether you compromise or not. Do you see? What do you see? What do you see? I can go on and on. I remember also a man called Abraham. Abraham prosperous man. And then one day he approached his nephew, Lot, and said, Lot, this land has become too small for us. You pick anything, just pick something. You pick anyone. He said, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. And the Bible says, in Genesis chapter 14, verse 10, he said that, and Lord lifted up his eyes and saw the area of Sodom, very lush. He said, I'll pick that one. And in, I think it is in verse 14, Genesis chapter 14, I think it is verse 14, after, or 13, actually 13, the Bible says there that after Genesis chapter 13, look at verse 14, and, and the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord has separated from him, he said, you to lift up your eyes. And look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Can you see it? Unless you see it, until you see it, then I'll give it to you. If you can't see it, it will be difficult. I want you to begin to ask the Lord, Lord, give me a vision of myself. Where am I going? What is the plan that you have for me? Everybody has a divine calling. You see, and you must not be envious of somebody else's. Do you know one of the things I wanted most seriously? Oh, God. If I still ask you, God, why? I can't see. Except in the bathroom when I'm alone. And I don't answer Lord. How is it that I'm making so I mean my toe? I mean the how do you say the musical song? Sorry, harmony. And the harmony, beautiful harmony in the bathroom. <laughs> but the minute I get, the minute I come out there to sit down, you will see the keyboard is just jumping up and trying to, try to locate my key. You see, but I am not I'm not gifted in that way. You saw the sister who let us down? Oh my god. <laughs> Gifted sister. That is her calling. That's her calling. And I want her to begin to sing. You see, it is not just to sing well. I want her to begin to think about this. How can I sing? Take me to you. Please help me see myself singing. And people will. People, people can say, Look, I can remember one day we were in church. We had just finished service. One sister came. I said, Pastor, I just want to give a testimony. Immediately, like all pastors will think, hmm, okay, what part of the sermon that that was, did you laugh? Well, I mean, which one ministered to you? You know what this sister said? He said, it is when that sister came out to give a special ministration. She said, immediately, God ministered in her heart. Who, why do you feel that you're gifting? You're smart. Are you a Russian? Your smile, welcoming somebody, can do a great work. It all depends on what do you see. 
Do you have that desire that when I go to church in the morning, when I go out, that Lord God, it doesn't matter who it may be, a handshake, a smile can change the life of someone over. Do you really see that? Do you, can you see it? Ah, unless you see it, you will never be able to enter. That is the reason why one of our prayers as I go to pray tonight is that the Lord give me eyes that see. Eyes that see things other people don't see. I remember when Jesus Christ was just about to start his ministry uh, in Matthew chapter 4. Let's look at verse 18. Let's start from verse 18. Uh, before we go there, before we go to before we go to Matthew, let's look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Are you in John chapter 1? Yes, Let's look at verse 35. It, are you there? Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, two, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned, seeing them following, and said to them, What do you see? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, When shall I say the teacher, where are you staying? And if you cut it long story short, they spent the day with him. And then, look at verse 40. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Now, when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, shall be called. Cephas, which is translated his soul. What is the point I want to bring out here? Simply this. You see, John and Andrew, they had seen something. They have seen that, listen, I we will see the Messiah. I don't know how they know, but they knew inside their heart. So much so that when they said that is the when John the Baptist said. That is the lamb that take it away the sin of the world. Immediately they follow him. They spent the night with Jesus, listening to him. And the brother went to find first of all his brother. And what did he say to him? He said, we have found. Meaning what? They have been seeking. They have been looking for him. He and Simon Peter, they have been talking. Of course, the reasons why they wanted to find Jesus was different. They wanted to be liberated from the Roman uh, occupation, etc. They wanted to, they wanted, but the most important thing was that they were seeking Jesus. Now that, and until your eye can see, if if it isn't that their eyes were open to know that they say, the Messiah is around the corner. When they said, oh, that's the Lord that will be there. Well, look at the way he's walking. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They wouldn't have followed him. But because their eyes were open, they were able to follow him. And you turn your eyes, you see, eyes that see. Matthew chapter 4. So I'm asking you, what do you see? Look at verse 18. Matthew chapter 4. Let's look at verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother and his brother casting a net into the sea for so they were fishermen. Now I, I hope you understand that when the Bible says and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, he had already walked past a lot of people. You, you understand what I'm saying? He had walked past quite a lot of people. He didn't stop by them. You see why? Because he has he has eyes that see. He knew that these are not these are, this cannot be my inner cup. So he went on until he saw Andrew, until he saw Peter. Ah, and immediately just told them, he follow me. And the scripture said, immediately they left what they were doing and followed him. The same thing with Elijah. God told him, he said, anoint Elisha. As he was just walking by, just threw his garment on that one. That one ran away. He said, please. You see, because Elisha knew by virtue of his eyes 
seems to, he knew that I'm not just a businessman. I'm not just a rich, I'm not just a rich son of a rich father. There's more to this thing. And the Lord showed him. So that when he threw the garment, when Elijah threw the garment on Elisha, he didn't throw it back and say, ah, what, what's going on here? He ran after and said, please, let me just say bye-bye. Because I know that what you have called me to do, what God has spoken to me, what I have seen, has started happening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It is important you see. If you don't see, you are going to leave you away. Do you know one of the do you know one of the things that make me it it, it, it pains me a lot? And I pray to God. I say, Father, because I know that I have not yet gotten there. They are still so do you know one of the saddest things in the Bible? <laughs> saddest statements. It's in Joshua chapter 13. I'd like us to read it. I'd like somebody who has a good voice, a radio voice, read it for us. A good radio voice, read it for us. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. There's nobody with a radio voice. Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Thank you. Read stand, my sister. You are reading the word of God. Hmm. Uh, 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 let's look at New King James. I'm sorry, let's look at King James. Now, Joshua was old, advanced in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old. And the Lord said to him, Thou art old and stricken in years, yet there remaineth yet very much land to possess. Do you know, brethren, it is good to receive your report card on earth, isn't it? So that you can adjust. How would it feel if you got to heaven and God said, well done, at least you got there. But do you know, you see that tiny cup you are holding, filled with water, do you know that I have planted an ocean for you? Do you know that? Do you know that I, I wanted you to have, to do much more? So what I'm just trying to say is that I don't know what God is doing through you. I don't know where God has carried you up to up to now. But you need to pray that the Lord will open your eyes so you can see. Let me tell you, everyone has a gift. Everyone. All you just need to do is to walk in that gift. No wonder the Bible says. It says that my it said my people perish. For why? Because of lack of Actually, that's not the speech I wanted to pray to quote. It's the one that talks about vision. Is it without vision? My people do what? They perish. And that one says they cast up with strength. The reason why people do the things they do, they don't come to church. They don't come to learn. They just do anything. It's because they cannot see. They cannot see. But when a man knows them and begs God, I say, Lord, what is it that you have called me to do? Where am I going? What is it that you want from me? You see, there are men. I'm not sure how many people are married here. We all look so young. But do you know that once a man recognizes the value of his wife, of his wife you can't, it's not physical. It's God that has to open your eyes to see it. Once your eyes are open and you see, you say, what? You mean this is someone that I have beside me? But because we don't see, it's because we don't see. Many people think, and I, I'll just, and then we'll pray now. Many people feel that Jesus Christ strolls to the cross. You know, just greeting people along the way. Hey, what's God? You know, that's not the way it was. Ah, no, 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 no. That's the way, that's not the way it was. If you read the Bible very well, the Bible says that when he got to get or get money, what did he tell God? He said, if it is possible, let's be against this thing. <laughs> and God, you see, you see, because if that is what Jesus sees, then it's all right. But God looked at 22, verse 43. The Bible says an angel came down from heaven to strengthen him. 
So I'm asking myself, what does that mean? Ah, we do need strength now. What does it mean? But well, you see, the, the Lord was saying to me that if you look at Hebrews chapter 12, look at Hebrews chapter 12, look at verse 2. He says, What? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Okay? And then what did he say? He said, Let's leave that one for now. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. Now, look at what he said. He said, Who for the joy that was what? Set before him. What did he do? He endured the cross, he despised the shame. And he's now set down. Meaning what? If God, God, you see, unless Jesus too saw something, it would have been difficult. Who wants to go to hell? Nobody wants to go to hell. It is not a physical beating that he said, God, let's change this thing. It is the spiritual torment of going to hell. Uh, so God now has to say, no, no, no. Actually, this is it. There is a joy. You see, after you have gone three days, three days, there is a joy of resurrection. So when he went to the cross, it wasn't the cross he was looking at. It was what? The resurrection. And he saw many, many children coming into the kingdom. That was what carried him. That's what sustained him. That's why he said, he said, I laid down my life. He said, no man, take it from me. He said, joyfully I lay it down. Nobody can take my life. He said, but the joy that was set before him, because of what he saw. Can I say this to you, my brother? Where you are today is because of what you have seen. Ah, if God can help you, lift up that curtain a little bit so that you can see where he wants you to go. You won't be happy like this. You won't be fighting everybody. You will be keeping malice. You will be playing anyhow with your Christian life. You will be saying to God, God understands. It's because you can see. But if God can help you see tonight, you, and then he begins to show you little by little that this is the expectation he has for you, you will change. You will become more, you will become more, 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 more serious. Look at what he told, look at what we learned about Joshua. He said, Joshua, he said, you are old and you are stricken in years. Can I say to someone here tonight, I'm not going younger, you are going older. He told, told he said, Joshua, he said, you are old and you are stricken in years. Yet, that is the issue. But we want our lives to be like that of Paul. <laughs> Paul, oh, great man of God. He said, I have finished my, he said, I have run the race. He said, I have finished the course. He said, I've, no, there's nothing signed. If Joshua wants to walk like that, no problem. But for me, no. Based on what was driving this man of God, it's what he saw. He said, I've been ascended to the daughter. He said, I heard things not lawful for a man to repeat. It's what he saw. Let's write on our feet. You need to pray tonight. Please come on, we need to bless the name of the Lord. We need to bless the name of our Lord. Let go shaka talama Let go
you commit our soul to your hand. And Lord, 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 Open my eyes, O oh God. 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 Yeah, the way you push it, it will be so good. But like a talaman, so you will be so good. The Lord Jesus. And just say to him, Lord, I have messed up. I have messed up. I have messed up. I have messed up. But Lord God Almighty, I stand upon the authority of the word of God. That if anyone come unto me, you will know why he has them out. Please go to the Lord now. Just talk to him. Settle it with him because we need to pray. We have just a few more minutes to pray. I just want you to pray that the Lord God Almighty will forgive you. Will forgive you completely. Because there's forgiveness in the house. The God is ready to overlook it. He's ready to overlook it. It doesn't matter what you have done. He said, I am God. He said, the, he said, the blood of Jesus. He said, it cleanses from all sin. Not just some sin, all sin. Hallelujah. Please let's avail ourselves. Let's avail ourselves. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Then I want us to pray again. The Lord is saying here that there is somebody, or maybe a few people here, you have a low self-esteem. You feel low. You feel everyone is better than you. No, 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 no. You see, it doesn't matter what it, it is the gifting of God. The Bible says it is the gift of a man that makes room for him. Do you know that the gift of Joseph was very simple. He could, he was a good administrator. Is there an administrator in the house? Is there an organizer in the house? You know, I don't want to compete. You don't need to compete with someone else. There's someone who can interpret things. It doesn't matter. Never have, you see, there is a gift in you. The Bible says that there is a gift in you. There is a treasure in you. The treasure, there is a treasure in you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So I just want you to begin to pray now. Let's pray. Brother, let us lift up our voice and pray for all those who have, who feel, how have a low self esteem. You see, because if you have a low self esteem, you cannot do much. Ah, yes. Please begin to say this that no one is better than you, and you are not better than any man. Ah, Paul said, he said, I don't care about the people who have gone ahead of me. He said that they, 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 they have nothing more than what God gives. Oh, yes. I'm not, you know, I'm not asking you to be arrogant, but I want you to know that you are a king. Anywhere you go, you are a king. Yes, even as quiet as you are, you are a king. 
you are a gift of the body of Christ. In what you can do in this church, no one else can do it. God has called you. He has established you for a purpose. When you open your mouth, cancer will come. Oh yes, oh yes. There is a gift in you. You are special. God is telling someone here tonight. He said you are special. The Bible says, He said, the hearing ear and the seen eyes, it is the Lord that made them both. The hearing ear, the seen eye, it is the Lord that made them both. Your prayer is very simple. Father, help me to hear the inaudible. Help me to hear what other people don't hear. Help me to see the invisible. Help me to see what others don't see. Do you want to take that as a prayer for me? Oh, yes. What sets a man apart? Is what God reveals in Jesus' mighty name. Let that be your daily prayer. As you are praying for greater works, as you are praying for greater works, pray also that the Lord will open your eyes. That the Lord will open your eyes. You can only see what the Lord shows you. Lord God Almighty, I magnify you and I give you praise. Roshe ke tene bo skanta la baba. Rega de ne me si. Ragadana Masi Proposte de Rega 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 de when I open the word of God to my heart, it's a mighty devil. La probo shake the devil, the probo boro. Let me say the name of God. Lord, you bless me. Lord, you worship me. Lord, you exalt me. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I'd like you to hold a brother or a sister beside you, please, because I want us to pray for one another. Please ensure that both hands are holding someone. Please, just. Hold somebody, hold somebody. Now I want you to begin to bless God for the person you are holding. Just begin to magnify him. Just begin to exalt him. And say, La Masa Katalama. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Thank you, oh God Almighty. Even for this person who is who we serve together. We are here together in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I lift this person up. Even before you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I love my brother. I love my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, because I know that if I do not love my brother, then I'm abiding in death. I love him, I love her with the love of the Lord. And I ask that your love will flow in this place. In Jesus' name, bind us together as we serve together. Lord, we will not injure one another, we will not gossip about one another. Lord, we will pray for one another. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I lift them up before you. I ask that your anointing will be upon my brother. I pray that your anointing will be upon my sister. Open their eyes, O oh God. Help them to see greater things. Help them to see greater things. Help them to see greater works. Help them to do greater works. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my brother, my sister, you will excel. You will excel in that which the Lord has called you to. Whatever it is that the Lord has called you to do, in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not disappoint God. You will not disappoint even this church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good shall come from you. It shall be well with you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we worship you. We magnify you. Lord, we ask that this church will grow. In the name of Jesus. In the last 30 seconds, please begin to pray that the Lord will bless this work. Lord, this is your work. Let this work prosper. Let it be well. In the name of Jesus. Find me useful. 
find him faithful in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord will bless you. Lord will worship you. Lord will magnify. Now, for the last 30 seconds, commit yourself to the Lord and say, Father, let grace be upon me. Let, let your grace fall upon me. Let your mercy fall upon me. Let me Lord be compassionate in the mighty name of Jesus. Use me mightily for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Help me, Lord, when I stand before you. Lord, help me to say that yes, I have been empty. I have emptied myself completely. In the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, everything you want me to do, I have done it. That I will stand not as Joshua, but I will stand as Paul. In the mighty name of Jesus. That I have finished, I have done everything completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. We give you honor and we give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we just take this song? Is it just the uh, just the chorus? Lord, lift me up and let me stand. We cannot do it on our own. But we ask tonight that with the opening of our eyes, that you will help us to stand on a higher plane, that we will not go back again. Lord, let your word in our mouth be like fire. When we kneel to pray, oh God, let us pray by revelation. Let it be well. Lord, do for me what I cannot do for myself. Lord God Almighty, I pray. I want to I want to do greater works in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty. Holy Spirit divine, I commit myself into your hands. I want to that, that is your prayer. That Lord, I commit our we commit ourselves to your hands. We ask that you will lead us, you will direct us. That we will only do the things that please you. And your name will be glorified in our lives. Thank you. Blessed be the name of our Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Please, I want, to, I want you to believe this. I want you to believe this. This is what you need. Amen. Amen. When we have gone, Pastor will build on it. Because every you cannot be what you cannot see. You cannot. There are some of you, you have prophetic words. Prophetic words. Prophetic words. There is no reason why you cannot attain. With God, does somebody believe that all things are possible? Yes, yes, yes. yes. All things are possible. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's give God a round of applause.